welcome back to my channel. My name is Alonda Elizabeth. I am a pre-law student currently waiting for my application offers and today's video is one that I have been so excited to record because it is really informative and fun. Well, I hope it's fun. Um, I will be going over 25 tips from admissions which are tips that I have consolidated over time um, as I went through various webinars, forums, etc. with various different schools and their admission teams and today is extra fun because I am actually joined by my little brother, Jonathan. <laughs> Come in, bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, we're going to be playing a fun Christmas game. Hopefully it's fun. Again, I made it up, so it's just really something that we're going to be doing. Um, because, you know, I love Christmas. So I actually did want to comment on the fact that um, he's wearing a sweater and I'm not. That's because mine is dirty, but I try still to go with the Christmas-esque, you know, vibe, so. <laughs> uh, let's get right to it. Okay, so my first five tips are in the personal statements category. I do have my notes, just so you know if I'm looking down. I just want to make sure that I get to you, get it to you guys um, succinct and as clear as possible, so I wrote them down this time. So first tip, do not begin the statement with a quote slash lyric. Avoid doing these cliches. The admissions people that told me this tip were very adamant about not starting a personal statement with that. Especially because in their opinion, most people just slap it on in the front and then don't refer back to it ever again. So unless you're like making a real like metaphor, like really using it throughout, do not do that cliche. Tip number two, as you write, Remember to show, not tell. Um, an example that an admissions person gave me was don't say I am resilient, but show it with your story. Tip number three, pay attention to the nuances of each school that you're applying to. Don't use one statement to for all of them. So like research, research, research. Like definitely want to research the school, see what it is they're looking for in a student, what it is that they value, and then try and include those nuances in your personal statement. I really did write one personal statement for each law school that I applied to and that is what they're expecting of you so don't use one um, tip number four make sure the substance of your statement is personal and specific if any anecdotes jokes are shared make sure it doesn't become about that person or event that's actually something I had problems with at the beginning where I would tell a story and then like a good one page would be about that person and I wouldn't say much about me. So be careful about um, losing focus on yourself, which is the point of the personal statement. And like they said, make them very specific. Like a lot, I think personal statements tend to be generic, especially to the admissions people who see so many of them. So they really recommend to to you know share stories that are very personal to you and that are very specific to you because that would make it unique right tip number five have various people read it not just people who know you well but people who don't like they really said to have strangers read it you know i actually met somebody at a networking event and i had that person who i only spoke to for about 20 minutes i um, read my personal statement because the admissions people said is that if you have a stranger read it like whatever they think of the personal statement will be pretty much what the admissions people will think because they're also strangers just reading a like a statement about you um so it's very important to have a lot of people read your statement not only for proofreading wise but just content like it allows you to see what it is people are really um getting from that statement and what who like who are they meeting through that statement um so i really i had like 10 people read each statement that i wrote so um Definitely take your time and allow yourself the ability to be able to send it to various people. All right, so you guys just heard my first five tips and now we're gonna play the first round of the game. So the game that we're gonna be playing is that we'll be each drawing a slip from this festive jar and each slip contains the lyrics of a song, a Christmas song specifically, with a few blank spaces. The goal is to sing the song and fill in the blanks. We will each draw one per round and see who sings it best slash fills in the blank correctly. So let's get it. Okay, you can go first. Okay. Okay, I was just making sure it was just one. Oi! Okay. Let's sing this. Yeah, you have to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> Anytime now. <laughs> All right, hold on. Give me a second. <clears throat> I think you should make up a rule. You can only last 10 seconds to remember the song and remember how it goes. Okay. You're taking too long. I don't need a lot for <laughs> Christmas. There's just one thing I need. <laughs> I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I just want you for my own. More than you could ever know. Blank. You're supposed to fill in the blank, bro. Oh. oh I don't know. <laughs> With the blank, I wow. Well, okay, wow, you really got it wrong then. I'll do it for you. So he lost this round, clearly, but I'll still pull a slip out just to be fair. Want to see here how it really goes? Well, okay. you were singing the rest of it correctly, but... I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just one thing I need. I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I just want you for my own, more than you could ever know. All I want for Christmas is you. Ooh, is that really it? Yes, that's really it, bro. I, for like, for information of like the for people and you, I blanked out the obvious line. FYI. I know. Okay. So, <laughs> so again, I clearly won that round, but my turn. I already had one in my hand. Damn, I, I thought you were going to be a real player. Not an easy win for me. That was hard. Okay, this is one in Spanish. Low key. Okay. So. El camino que lleva Belén Va hasta el valle que la nieve cubrió Los pastorcillos quieren ver a su rey Le traen regalos en su viejo tambor. Ropo pom pom. Oh. Ropo pom pom. All right. I would not have gotten that either. Damn. Again. Yikes. Next set of tips are about addendums. Tip number one, keep them short. Three paragraphs, never more than one page. Avoid sounding whiny and just give the straight facts. Um, I know one of the admissions people that I spoke to did say, you know, like, um, if you had like, extenuating circumstances, like, don't complain about them happening. Just say, you know, like, A happened and this affected this. Move on. So they really just want to hear the facts. Um, they don't want you to be complaining, like, it was very difficult for me, like, etc. And it may be one-liner, but don't spend the majority of your three paragraphs talking about how you felt that that happened. Just let them know that it happened. Tip number two, for it to be effective, um, must be different than the personal statement. Um, I actually didn't chose not to include some diversity statements for some schools because, um, and I'm, I'm gonna kind of put it in here with the addendums, just because I felt like I wasn't gonna write anything different than my personal statement was. So just be mindful um, that if you're gonna be using addendums, make sure it's different than a personal statement, and that way it is effective. Tip number three, most admission teams were very positive about addendums, so if you have more to say, say it. Because I was nervous about including addendums because I was thinking like, maybe I shouldn't be, etc. Like a lot of admissions teams were really like, do it. Like we want to know more about you. Like one personal statement and like stats about you. Don't tell us who you are. So use the addendum space if you have things to say. Tip number four. For the LSAT, if you generally aren't a great standardized test taker, explain that, compare it, like maybe an example that an admissions person told me was to maybe compare your LSAT score to your SAT score and show them that you had success in undergrad despite whatever score you had and that you'll have um, success in law school despite the LSAT score. So that was very helpful, that admissions person to give me that tip because that's exactly what I ended up submitting an addendum about. Tip number five, proofread your addendums as much as you proofread your personal statements. Maybe you don't have to send it to 10 people, but everything that the school receive, receive from you is very important. So you definitely do want to at least have one person also read your addendum um, to just make sure that you have a different point of view. All right, welcome back. Round two. Let's see. Okay. Hopefully we do better. Hopefully for your sake. Did you just 
look. Well, yeah, you were looking at mine. Oh, okay. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Walking home from my house Christmas Eve. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you could say she. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, let me show him again. I mean, you're pretty close this time. So, Grandma got run over by a reindeer walking home from our house Christmas Eve. You can say there's no such thing as Santa, but as for me and Grandpa, we believe. These are old songs I haven't heard in a while. Okay, but the, I, they're basic Christmas songs, bro, that you have sang in the past, so come on. Ten years ago. Get in your Christmas spirit. It's December 12th already. All right. My turn. Okay. This is a pretty, pretty obvious one, too. Uh -huh. I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. I gotta go away. Baby, it's cold outside. This evening, this evening has been... So very nice. You got it wrong. <laughs> Why? What is it? It's but baby, it's cold outside. He, this one. But baby, it's cold outside both times. You're just saying. I baby. did say it. Oh. You're just saying baby, it's cold outside. You're freaking dumb. Whatever. Okay, but you still did not win this round. I did by default because you sucked okay. way more than I did. Yeah. Anyways, I'm pretty sure I won that round. Either way, I'm still winning. All right, next set of five tips. Letters of recommendation. Tip number one, letters from professors are best. Law schools want to know how you will be doing in your classes. Every single time, I honestly ask this question a lot from all my admissions panels that I attended because um, I felt that my, my I would have stronger letters of rec from employers because I worked through all my undergrad, but they were really adamant about having professors be um, their first choice because they want to know how you work in a classroom. So. If you haven't graduated from undergrad yet, like talk to those professors because that's what you're going to want to have. And if you already graduated, um, do your best trying to get a letter of recommendation from a professor. I did end up getting two letters of rec from professors that I honestly didn't quite think about when, the, when I was first picking out letters of rec. So I'm sure you have some that you can ask. Tip number two. The title of the person writing your letter is not worth as much in comparison to the content. Examples that they gave a lot was like, we don't care if like a mayor or like head of department writes your letter if all they have to say about you is some generic mumbo jumbo. They really want actual content in those letter of recommendation. Which brings me to my tip number three. Um, give your recommenders guidance. Talk to them. Let them know that schools are expected to hear about your writing abilities, um, etc. Like allow for more substantive letters. I honestly did never thought about this. If it weren't for the admissions teams who gave this tip about actually reaching out to the professors that you're asking and saying like, hey, here is my resume, here is my personal statement, and like I am free to chat with you, um, give me a call, I can give you any, like answer any questions you may have about me. I actually had a professor ask me for lying about include in my letter of rec so I was just able to let him know like anything to do with my writing abilities the way I worked with my peers the ability to ask you know you slash professor for help or like be be active in discussions etc like things like that um is is something you could do and that you should do really if you want to make sure those letters of recommendation are 100% awesome tip number four give them enough time a month is what a lot of admissions teams recommended at least for your, for giving your letter of rec time to write it um two weeks minimum at some of, and then also ask them if they can write a good letter and be frank because you really need this and you need them to be able to put in the work again this is something i never thought of myself but actually blatantly asking the professor that you're planning on asking a letter recommendation like not only can you write me one but can you write me a good one because that's really what you want you don't just want something generic so um very a lot of admissions panels really made that point clear like you really want a good letter so ask for that you know and it's important to you as an applicant so you know even though it might be weird to ask a professor like, hey can you write me a good letter like you should because it's important
All right, round three of this game that he is clearly losing. Am I wrong? Yes, you are. Am I wrong? Yes. Feliz Navidad. You really had to think about that one? <laughs> Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Y prospero año y felicidad. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. That's it. There I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. You can't go all the way, bro. No, I just filled in the blank. Right, my turn. Let me sing it better than he did. Oh, oh hell yeah, bro. What? Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw him, you would even say it glows. That's so it's too easy. Hell yeah. Bro, they all should have been easy. I got the harder ones. I'm not even going to lie. Yeah, but that means they sang this round better than you did. So it's mine. So Sorry, bro. You're losing. All right. So these are my last 10 tips about overall app advice. So this brings us to tip number 16. Apply when your application is the absolute best that it could be, whether that be waiting for you to increase your LSAT score, waiting for you to be available to give yourself plenty of time to work on your personal statements, plenty of time for us for letters of recommendation. Um, just make sure that you're applying when you're at your best. Number 17 is the earlier you submit, the better. You should never really be applying by the deadline, which was something I honestly did not know. Like I, you know, some people have March priority deadlines, February, April, and I was like, oh, I have plenty of time. And I started to realize that that's not when they receive applications the most and that's not when they're really expecting you to submit. So apply the earlier the better. But remember tip number 16, don't apply early just because you think you have to apply early when you for sure know you're at your absolute best because it's most important to be your absolute best applicant possible but if you can do it earlier the better tip number 18 enjoy the process remember who you are and be a consumer of law schools don't limit your schools based on clinics alone you can potentially change your type of law or add another along the way I was really grateful for the admissions team who brought that up about enjoying the process um, because you know you only do this one time <laughs> and this is part of your journey to becoming an attorney and going to law school so that was really refreshing to hear an, an admissions team give you that tip so I wanted to share it with you all because although it's not as substantive as ma many other tips that I've given you it's I think it's important to ground yourself and really just breathe in enjoy the process as you go tip number 19 be realistic about where you are applying to don't add stress to your process again very important that you know I, I had my video about my schools that I was applying to and how I ended up taking two schools off my list and I think it was mostly because of this one tip that I have received from an admissions team um, I was very much stressing about these schools even though I know I didn't have a high chance of getting in so it's like well then why were they on my list right um, don't add stress to yourself it's already a stressful process don't give yourself any more last round there's no way you can really redeem yourself so this is just for fun <laughs> I barely even know this song Last Christmas, I gave you my heart, and the very next day, you gave it away. This year, to save me from tears, I, you needed to give me something special. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to someone special. <laughs> Another one in Spanish. Con mi burrito sabanero voy camino de Belén. Si me ven, si me ven, voy camino de Belén. Tuki 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 tuki, tuki 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 da. Con mi burrito. Okay, that's extra. The line no, was tuki 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 tuki. No. I love how I made the how game. You, you don't even know, know how long. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Stop trying to like take away my points, bro. You just lost. You know. 
Okay, well, since you were complaining, these, these songs no, were, like, hard or whatever, what was a song that you expected to be in here and you must sing it? Do it. Which one? Any song? Well, any song that you thought I would have in here, Mr. Um, these were not, like, that popular or whatever you were complaining about. Mary, did you know <laughs> that your baby boy would one day walk on water. Come on, pentatonix. Give them some <laughs> Okay, you go. Start beatboxing then. No. <laughs> Not it. that gifted. Anyways, thank you for joining me in this video, Jonathan. My pleasure. Sucks to suck, you know, that you lost. This was a close game. No, it wasn't. Like, did you like having Jonathan on the channel? Would you like him to be on here more? Leave a comment below if you want him to do anything else. Number 20, make a spreadsheet. It'll help keep all your information together. And as you receive offers, include scholarship information, terms of the scholarship, etc. Number 21, look at external scholarships. And even if you cannot apply to them at the moment, keep an eye on what they are looking for so you can potentially do stuff that market you for them. And this might be a good thing to do as you await offers. Tip number 22, don't let the budget be your biggest deciding factor. Literally every single school I, I spoke to mentioned this. Like yes, obviously law school is expensive, but honestly it's expensive across the board. So don't let budget be your own, like be your deciding factor in between schools. You have to take everything into account. And that's something I definitely plan on doing myself. Tip number 23, as a first generation student, we suffer imposter syndrome and are accustomed to think that we have to do everything on our own. Remember to ask for help in every and all aspects. No, you're not alone. You have a community and like, you know, people have done it before. Ask for help, always ask questions, always ask why things are the way they are. Like, you know, you have to put your best forward and that is being out there, asking questions and not thinking that you have to do it all by yourself. So I'm so happy to share that tip because it was very, it was a very important awakening for myself as well. Um, with that being said, you know, I am a resource as well. I am not quite done, but I, I have already completed certain parts of this process. So if you ever have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will gladly answer them. Tip number 24, it's not an easy journey and it's okay to respond emotionally, but don't let that derail you. Keep working hard. You are in charge of your own education. Again, just more breathe in, breathe out. This is hard. We know it. Feel free to cry about it, but don't let that interrupt your path. Tip number 25. Woo! own your space have a positive mindset and be proud of the work you've done again like i cannot believe those last three tips came from an admissions director it was just i didn't expect them to care about our well-being but yes be proud we worked so hard we've done so much like even to be at this point be to be applying to have decided to pursue an education in the legal field is amazing i had to remind myself of that all the time but yes 25 tips from admissions 25 days of christmas merry christmas i hope you guys enjoyed this video um like and subscribe 